How could a pre-gunpowder army challenge the enemy's air superiority? Imagine I'm a time traveler or someone, who has been transported to an alternative reality. Against all odds I established myself as a respected inventor, teacher and noble in one of the local nations. Since it is pretty much my bonus to train engineers and scientists to invent new things here, I've recently finished building a small fleet of hydrogen airships. These and hot air balloons have become my main contribution to the military, apart from artillery and guns. Despite my interventions, most of the fighting is still happening in the ancient and medieval way, tight infantry formations and cavalry. So, the last campaign was a great success. The airships allowed us to do reconnaissance, harassment of enemy forces and to perform air raids. Airship armaments include bombs, splinter bombs, fire barrels, poison gas bombs, boulders, diseased rats, archers and whatever nasty things we can come up with. Unsurprisingly this made the war quite easy. However I like to be ahead of the enemy. So how could they challenge my air superiority? Projectile launchers are an obvious idea and were tried. However, nighttime air raids targeting the weapons, enemy pioneers and construction efforts proved to be an effective countermeasure. Even though, ballista bolts aren't that effective at bringing down airships. The British had to use a combination of explosive and incendiary ammunition to take down German airships in WW1. Additionally staying above their range is a decent strategy as well. So unless someone gets their own air corps, be that copycat airships or flying beasts, my air force is pretty much unstoppable, or isn't it? Perhaps you overspent on the wrong weapon. World War I taught us that early WWI era air warfare, while romantic, has serious drawback when used against ground troops. The greatest strategic impact of airship warfare in World War I was diverting massive amounts of labor and materiel to air defenses instead of ground combat forces. The greatest operational Impact of air warfare in World War I was scouting and signaling, not direct combat against ground troops. Both fixed wing and airship tried. Tactical. Attacks against ground troops in World War I. These were generally considered failures, aircraft carried too little firepower to be decisive, and could not deliver that firepower accurately. The king of battle in World War I was artillery, not air power. Also, note that early airships could indeed. Fly at night, but had terrible problems. Navigating. Accurately. They depended upon celestial navigation, so clouds got them lost fairly easily. Several raids dropped their bombs on the wrong cities entirely, or on farmland when they simply could not find their targets. Since you say, despite my interventions, most of the fighting is still happening in the ancient and medieval way. Tight infantry formations and cavalry. It looks like you expended too few resources on artillery and machine guns, which will have a much greater tactical impact against ground forces. Your modernized ground forces are apparently too weak to be decisive, or you wouldn't have this problem, while your air force is unstoppable. In the air, its ground facilities are vulnerable to attacks that the air force's limited tactical capability is likely incapable of stopping. Meanwhile the diversion of vast quantities of war materiel and labor to build your impressive air corps has, for your description, apparently weakened your ground forces. This makes both your ground and air forces vulnerable, despite your technological advantage. You overspent on the air force instead of more artillery and guns for your ground forces.